Everything is cool. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to start today with um, Laravel 10 and afterwards Silvan is going to show his road to his first Laravel project. And yeah, let's get going. As you all know, Laravel 10 got released just two days ago on Tuesday. Yeah, it's a major release, but yeah, how can I tell it? It's like the releases in Laravel are not that big anymore. So let's get going with, um, with a new Laravel project. And if you are using the Laravel helper, we have a new way how you can scaffold our application with the Breeze helper. And that's pretty cool. Let's do it with that. So we can start. We call it Laravel 10. We're going to use Git. So it's already initialized a Git project. We're going to use Breeze. And if you're not on the past wagon, that's the new kind of way of testing. So let's try it as well. So Bogdan. Yeah, can you uh, change the, the setting for the screen? I think it's a bit small. Ah, yeah, I, I tried it already, but it did uh, not work out. So. <laughs> yeah. OK, and the next one is nice that you can even choose the stack now. So we, we mm -hmm. have different options. We can use just Blade. That's like the PHP templating language of Laravel, or Vue, React, or even just the API if you don't need any front end stuff. And, but for the sake of simplicity, let's go with the blade one. Do you want dark mode? For sure, yeah. So let's get going. And as long as it's installing, let's talk something about the release cycle. Because with Laravel 10, now the minimum PHP version was uh, bumped up to 8.1. But actually, the upgrades from PHP versions are pretty easy now since PHP 8. So this should be no problem for you. And the release cycle of Laravel is like one major version is coming out like every year. So this year is Laravel 10 on February. Last year, Laravel 9 came out also in February. And Laravel 11 will be on February next year. Um, the, the reason behind this is because um, Laravel is using like five, six Symfony packages. And the Symfony packages always get a major update like end of the year. So the Laravel core team got time to adopt everything, get to the new latest standards, and then release also a new major version on themselves. OK, let's get out of the boring part and jump right into the application. As you can see, it's already finished. Let's go inter inside it and open it. And let's do it like here. And as you can see, this is the new screen page from Laravel 10. We already have like a login screen, register screen, a welcome page. And if you toggle like the system preferences, we have even the dark mode already inside it. It's pretty impressive. Well, I like it. And let me show you some cool features that Laravel offers. So if you want to scaffold something quickly out, we can just use SQLite. And let me change something as well for later that we use an in-memory database for the tests, but that will be later. And if you do now, now like a migration, so let's start it here. Let's get rid of this. It will tell us <coughs> at the start that um, we don't even have a SQLite file, like a database. So it will prompt us like, hey, do you want to generate the database? We say, yeah, sure, why not? Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's already generating. We have a database running. I can show you it here. So if you open this here and add the file, that's the file that was generated currently. And go inside it and refresh. We will see that the, all the tables are generated like for the basic project. And the nice part is we can already start using it. We can go inside here, register a user. And we are inside, and it's already working. We have now a registered user with the database already working. When we go inside here, yeah, it was like not even a minute. And if we go here, and we can even run tests. Tests are already included that like email verification, login, um, and password reset, stuff like that's already working. And if you look inside the test folder, we can see like the profile test. And yeah, all the tests are already written for us, like the basic <coughs> test that we can use. And it's already using like the latest and newest uh, testing framework that's called PEST. It's, um, it's like a layer above of PHP unit. And yeah, it's like the nice way to write tests. Like if you're used in JavaScript with Jest, PEST is like the equivalent, equivalent <laughs> however you say it. Yeah, to it. Because you have no classes or something, that's like a plain PHP file, you're just writing your test inside there, and it's working pretty cool. 
Yeah. So, one nice part about um, Laravel is that now with Laravel 10, they added like types to it. So before everything was like, yeah, there was just in the doc blocks the type, but they are now using like the types that PHP offers. As you can see, we have here on line 13, the schedule function. And the schedule function has an object that's called schedule and the return type void. Before Laravel 10, actually these both were omitted here. So they actually, you do, wouldn't know what is inside. But <coughs> they have the, what's called the doc blocks for it. So before Laravel 10, you had to do something like that, that you have to specify everything in doc blocks. But the doc blocks are currently now redundant because we are using like the uh, types from PHP built in. And that's pretty cool. And one thing, when you actually have to use the stock blocks is when you're using generics. So if you go here like to the casts array, we can see that we have an array here, but we specify it. We make it more, more generic, more specified. So we say the key must be string. So email verified that, that's the key, it's a string. And we say the value must be string as well here that there. Okay, you can say that's pretty trivial now for this, but we can go maybe some more complex part, like on the form request object. There you can see we are also returning an array, but we are using generics as well. So we say the uh, key should be string as well, but the value can be actually different this time. It could be a um, validation rule object, it could be an array, or it could be a string. And that's actually a nice part for the developer to uh, type in him, hey, actually you can only use this three stuff, not an integer or something else. And if you go here inside, you will see that like we are using for all the um, values with a string and afterwards um, an, an array, but we can actually write it different. We can just put a string inside as well. This is also working. That's like the old school way of writing it, or the, the first way how you can write it. And yeah, that's also working as well. Or you just pass a rule object. Yeah. And that's all the fuss about the type in. So it makes your code more, more robust and that you will tell the other developers in your team what can actually the function uh, you're calling, what should it use and what should it not use. Yeah, and I actually pretty like this feature. Any questions so far to this feature? Yeah. Uh, have you tried using PHP stand? Uh, currently, I'm not using it on any projects, but I want to try it, yeah. Because you have to actually use it with, for, if you want to use PHP stand, you have to actually use the doc blocks here. So you, you will tell it what actually got returned. So yeah, there will be less errors in your application. Yeah. Okay, for the next feature, I will open Tinkerwell. That's like, um, how can I tell it? It's like a runtime for Laravel. Um, and we have a new helper for the string class and that's called the password helper. And that's just generating a random password. As you can see, every time I run it, it generates a <laughs> random password. We can tell the length of it. We can tell should it not have any symbols and so on, so on. Um, no, it should be default, so. Yeah, I know it's maybe a tiny feature, but they actually make plenty of time where you generate a user and you need to generate a password. And that's pretty cool that we have now something inside just uh, Laravel to use it. So if you go here inside string helper, we will see that it's actually a pretty basic <laughs> function. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's not that mind blowing, but it's nice that we already have this out of the box and we don't have to think about it. Okay, the next part is a um, bit more um, how would I say it? Like Laravel offers a lot of commands. When you can, uh, when you are writing PHP um, artisan list, you will see that you have a lot of commands, as you can see here. And it's sometimes hard to remember what um, parameters are used for each command. And we have now a helper here. Like when we do a new controller, we don't have to uh, put any parameters inside it because Laravel now has everything optional. And we can say, what should the controller now name? And we can name it like user controller. And then it will tell us which type should we take, like maybe an empty controller, a resourceful, or maybe you never heard maybe of the singleton controller because it's something new. Then you can go maybe to the documentation, look controller, singleton, 
just look inside it and see, ah, the singleton is doing that and this. And that's actually a good way to even get some new stuff out of the framework if you're not always up to date with every release because there's so many stuff coming at Laravel, like every week a new release is coming and most of the times there are also new features also shipping with it. And it's sometimes pretty hard to, get, uh, to stay up to date with the latest features because there are coming so many new features. But let's, uh, for our purpose, let's choose the resource one and which model should it use. So let's take the user model. And if you go now inside the user controller and maybe on the edit function, we can see that um, now the edit function is already provided with the type ins of the user, with the correct uh, return type. And the same for the show function, we have the user with the correct type, and for the update function. So we can just um, use the RESTful approach to, uh, don't know, update the user, create a new user, delete the user, and stuff that we are always doing, like CRUD applications. Yeah. And that's like for every new command, you can use it like just make something, you can use every command that everything is now um, optional. So you don't have to pass any arguments anymore and just use it and uh, the application will just guide you through it. I think that's pretty cool even for um, senior developers So um, because most times you don't remember maybe which are the flags or you don't even have to open the help uh, menu anymore, you just write it and let's go with it. Yeah. Okay. So far, any questions? No. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, I'm opening Tinkerwell again. And there's a new feature that's, that's called the process feature. And it's a pretty cool one. So let me demonstrate it. <laughs> As you can see, we can um, now run processes here. And uh, I think all of you are familiar with the list command. And as you can see, it's listing its current directory from out. And that's pretty cool to use. And if you use uh, some gibberish like um, Bogdan is great. Let's see if I got the command. OK, nothing is happening. So what's actually going on? So no, that is not great. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that not true. Undefined. It's undefined. Yeah. <laughs> The reason why now this is not working or doing any output is because processes are working like um, with exit codes and stuff like that, and it's kind of tricky. So if I check here the exit code, we will see that it's one two seven, and they're like like different outputs, like the normal standard output and the standard error output. And to get the error output, I I need to use something different, like here, and it will tell me ah what the command not found. Bam, <laughs> it was a typo. <laughs> Yes. Um, okay. But what happens if you got something longer running? So let's go with something like, uh, let's keep the error output. Let's go with something like npn run build. That takes some time. And now it says read not found. That's because I'm in the wrong directory. Let's go to our newly, that's now our newly generated Laravel 10 project. And if you run it, it will take like, um, uh, a few seconds to do it. So we run it, one, two, three. So it takes some time actually to do the build with read. And the nice part is with Laravel, we can actually, when we are now using the process facade in our application, we can easily just mock it out and say, hey, you should use some, uh, some fake implementation. So when I run it now again, the bottom screen will disappear and it will be instant because npm run build is not run actually because it's now we're fake. So let's do it like this, doing nothing. And the nice part is we can tell something like this. If you work with the HTTP facade, it's the same. We can say npm on everything that's run with npm should have now like a fake output. And that will be instant now on the bottom, as you can see here. It's like instant. And one more thing that you can do, we can just assert that something was run. So uh, if you do like, um, git list or something like that and sell assert ran. This, of course, will fail because we are not running any git commands here currently. So you will see an expected process was not invoked, asserting that false is true. So, uh, but when we do npn run build, it should actually work. So no error was thrown, like you see our fake output and stuff like that. And so we can actually test something when we are actually using the process facade 
And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can do like concurrent stuff as well. So if you're really interested in to do with PHP process stuff, I don't know why you would do it. <laughs> I have actually no use case for that, but <laughs> that's actually pretty cool that you can do that. Okay, so far, any questions to this feature? Who uses this? <laughs> yeah, I do. I know I do. Yeah, yeah. You, got the, yeah. you got the use case for yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, then it's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like the thing, like, yeah. not many people use it, but yeah. it's, it's so much nicer. I used to use a library, I think it was called Terminal or something. Yeah. It was very similar yeah. to it before Laravel 10, and now I was, today I was like, I'm oh, switching everything over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So, it's so easy. That's um, yeah. Just to write everything, you can test it. Write your tests, and everything works like a charm. Okay, let's get to a. There's a new feature uh, package coming. So let's install that. That's called Pennant. Let's see if I write it right. And that's a package that allows you to do feature flags. So. If you got like a new redesign for our homepage and we only want to see like only a certain part of our user should see this page, then we can say, ah, that's like A-B testing. Only 50% of the people have seen the new page and the others seen like the old page. And that's now actually easy done with, with Laravel. So if you go inside here, we can just use the um, feature. It's called feature, yeah. Then we're going to define it. And let's say it's a new redesign. And we, the second argument is a callback. Or we can just pass the lottery to it and say it shall, shall be 50%. So every second user should get it. And if you go to the welcome page, we can now add a new feature like this. Um, redesign. And redesign. And feature. And we're going to put some fire emojis in because it's lit. So let's do it like that. <laughs> and if you go now to the welcome page, ah, it's not working currently because we need to migrate. Um, because it's database driven. No, it's not. What's happening? Payment. So you maybe have to change the driver to database? Uh, maybe. Pennant. What's going on? It, that's a pretty good live coding here. So let's let's see what happens when I run it. Run nothing. Am I in the right project? Yeah, I should be. Okay. Let's remove it and add it again. So maybe it's happening. Didn't you do the welcome template and we're automatically redirected to the dashboard? Yeah, it was the welcome page. So yeah, yeah, it should has the login like here on the top. Maybe I have to log. Ah, now no such table, but okay. I have to publish the migration. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Oh, actually, I tested it. I didn't have to do that, but. Let's publish this. Maybe it's working. Uh, Thank you. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What <do> you <laughs> and when I go inside here, now we have a features table. And it's empty. It's got like a few columns, name, scope, and the value. And when I now visit our page, wait, this, this one. Oh, I see now the. Fire. But the thing is, you, um, if you do this to false now, currently, um, I won't see it anymore. But the thing is, you should be aware um, that this, the feature flag, um, it's always bound to an active user. So currently, we have a guest user, that's because the scope is so null currently. But when you are logging to a normal user, like let's go to this user that we generated before and go to the welcome page. We will see that's now bound to the scope of the uh, user with the ID of one. And if you delete it, maybe we will see that the value will be false. So let's get again. And now this time it was false. So it's like a 50-50 chance. So if you want to use it, um, 
you have to be always aware that's always bound to a user that you can't just uh, if you want to uh, use it for like a public page. It's I'm not sure how you can actually do it, but there should be actually a method. But most times it's like ah, I just want that all my admins user see this new feature or something like that. Yeah, and the nice part if you're using um, an SPA or something like that, you can. Um, maybe do something like this and just put the feature inside it so you can grab the values out of here and say the value like redesign and let's console lock it out and if you go now inside here we will see that now that we have an object and just with the flag of redesign so if you want to use it in the front end so if you look inside now in the head it's a pretty easy json encode so not anything fancy, so that's how you can get the data actually back to your front end. And yeah, that's a nice way how you can use it. Yeah, that's like that's like a um, first party package that Laravel currently now uses. So if you got some like A B testing doing or something that you don't want to release for the whole application for every user, that's a nice way you can actually now do it. Okay. So far, any questions? For this newly, newly package, no. Okay, and okay. Let's go. And the last part is upgrading, upgrading, upgrading. Everyone hoping. Everyone loves to upgrade something. I know, especially when you're coming from Type Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. It's okay. Um, the nice part is. I believe you. Um, I can just now copy my composer JSON file. Put it here inside, can I upgrade Laravel? There's even a shortcut to visit it, it's from Laravel Shift. And when I go inside it, copy paste it here inside and look inside it, it will tell me are all the packages that I'm currently using um, compatible with the PHP version that I'm using. As you can see, now everything is green currently, but if you use something that's not green, then yeah, you can't upgrade it. Maybe you're doing a PR, tell the author, make changes, but most times you just fork it. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see in the upgrade guide here from 9 to 10, it's estimated to have um, 10 minutes just upgrade time. But if you want to stay on top of everything and want to add like all the types that are currently now inside it, I would recommend to use the Laravel shift, like the documentation to do it. It's like, yeah, it's even faster than 10 minutes if you use Laravel shift. It's like a few minutes then <laughs> afterwards, and you don't even have to read anything. So, <laughs> yeah. So if you're lazy like me, you can just go it. And the nice part is, it's like it's an automated way how everything is uh, done. So, um, you don't do any silly mistakes or something that's then breaking later on your application, and you know it's the machine has done it and everything is fine. And you can just go inside it and look like every commit on its own, like. You will get something like this here on the right, as you can see. Um, e everything is like with a separate commit, and then you can look inside the commit. Do you want it? Do you don't want it? And if you don't want, like maybe you don't want types in your application, then you can just revert it. Yeah, something like this. So it's pretty cool, and it's actually pretty cheap, just 19 bucks, and then you get it. And here you can even watch a demo how um, JSON is even uh, upgrading like an application in two minutes. So. It's, <laughs> it's pretty convenient, yeah. Okay, that's like now everything I got for the new Laravel release. I hope you are, everyone of you are also hyped as I am for the new release now. <laughs> uh, I know the changes are not that big, but I love that it's regularly evolving, it's always changing and that new features are added and yeah. It's nice to work and it gets always easier. Like you have seen, it didn't take me one minute to get started with a new project, with a login screen, with a registration flow, uh, with a database, with tests, and uh, I have no clue what else. <laughs> and yeah, this, it's pretty, pretty nice to get going with a new project, with a new application. So, any questions so far? Okay, uh, thank you for your time and yeah.